G'day, I'm Warwick Schiller and today I want to talk to you about desensitizing horses and specifically I want to talk about a type of desensitizing that I've come to know as being referred to as cat H, C-A-T dash H. And you know, it's something I've been messing with for a while without even knowing that it actually had a scientific term and recently I've I've come to realize um, that it actually what I've been doing has a scientific term and it actually if you want a bit of the backstory of it, it actually came from um, a uh, professor at a university doing experiments with dogs and they, they, they were working with really aggressive dogs trying to get over there and aggressive dogs are, are afraid, you know, that's why they're aggressive um, and they were working with these dogs and they called it uh, CAT which stood for something aggression training I forget what the C was and what they did with these dogs was they put them in a cage and they what they do is they'd approach them from a distance and they as soon as the dog became aware of them before it before they started to bark and get aggressive they would stop and wait for that horse uh, horse dog to show some sign of relaxing and then retreat and that was where it all came from but someone else adopted it for horses and for the horses I think they called it uh, constructional approach training and then the H is for horses but it's a, it's a type of desensitizing that I've been doing for quite a, messing with it for quite a while and like I said I've only just recently realized it's got a scientific name and I don't even know if I'm doing it exactly scientifically right but I do refer to cat H when I talk about this type of desensitizing and what it is it's about staying below your horse's threshold and uh, so what you will do, let's say you're trying to desensitize a horse to a flag or something or other, you know, you're going to bring the flag around, and you need to be really observant to do this, but you're going to bring the flag around until the horse becomes aware of it. And when the horse becomes aware of it, before they get worried about it, you're going to stop right there. Don't go any closer. And then you're going to wait for the horse to show you some sign of being less concerned. So some sort of more relaxation, and then you're going to take the flag away. Uh, that's basic that's basically it if you bring it so close that the horse flees you messed up you're not doing cat H anymore but I what I do these days if you brought it close enough for the horse ran away I'd take it away and say hey sorry I overstepped your boundary I went over that threshold let me start again and so I'll you might be a little bit confused listening right now but I'll show you a clip that was actually filmed in this arena here recently at a clinic here and, and this lady it was the very start of the clinic and this lady uh, was gonna do some some groundwork and I pulled my flag out and her horse snorted and kind of jumped backwards and she and I she said you know I've tried to do stuff with the flag but I can't find a starting point because he's scared of the flag and so I thought well this would be a good opportunity to show how this works so I said let's turn the camera on and I'll show you how it works so this clip here is from a, this is live you know this is real footage from an actual training situation at a clinic and think about it this horse like you know three minutes before we started this video i pulled the flag out and i wasn't terribly close to him but i was out there in front of him the lady was holding on to him i pulled the flag out and he kind of jumped backwards and snorted so just watch this and um it'll give you an idea of how cat h actually works hello sweetness what's his name dylan dylan hi dylan so we're here at a clinic at our house and uh this is Linda and her horse, Dylan, and a minute ago I was standing over there and I pulled the flag out just to talk about something and Dylan kind of <coughs> snorted and um, kind of leant back away from it. And Linda said, you said you've done some stuff with the flag in the past and he'd been good with it. He's not, at least right now. And a lot of times what people would do with the flag if they're snorty about it, is desensitize them to it. And a lot of times, the reason they're desensitizing is to get the horse to stand still and not respond to it. So I don't really even like to use the term desensitizing anymore. What I'd like him to do is engage with it, means stand still and be aware of it. Because a lot of times when you desensitize, they stand still and they're not aware of it. They just kind of block it out. And so I'm just gonna pull the flag out here. Now, if I bring, I'm just going to watch his expression. I'm going to bring it to here. And right here, he's slightly, there you go. He looks towards it, I'll take it away. So he kind of went, what is that thing? And when he, so I, I noticed as soon as he was aware of it, before he was scared of it, okay? 
and then, and I might have you come around this side, because right now he's snorting a lot, and the flag's on this side. If he runs away, where do you think he's going to run to? So I wouldn't want you to get run over. Um, so I brought the flag out, and as soon as he became aware of it, I stopped right there, and I waited for him to do something positive, something better, not worse. And he actually turned his head towards it. When he turned his head towards it, that's when I took it away. Okay. So I'm just going to bring it out to here. Right there, he's aware of it. Now he's not blinking. There you go, he blinked, so we'll take it away. Okay, these are very, very subtle things. But he became aware of it and he stopped blinking. He looked at it, but he stopped blinking. And so I'm going to wait there until he is, he feels slightly better about it. And when horses get concerned, as their level of concern grows, their rate of blinking slows down. And as soon as he's link, looking at it, he stopped blinking. So I waited till he, and his head was up a little bit, so I've got two things I could probably judge that are better. His head could lower slightly or he could start blinking, okay? Or if he was snorting and he stopped snorting and started breathing a little deeper, then I could take it away. But I'm going to take it away when he feels better. But you cannot do that if you cross that threshold. So if I just brought it around to about there, he'd be running around and he'd be over threshold, he'd be concerned. So I'm just going to bring it from here, bring it around here. Now notice his ears are still, now he looks at it, lowers his head, I'll take it away. But you notice, I just took the flag from here to there. He didn't snort, he didn't just fix it on like that. His ears were still going backwards and forwards. Yeah, and so I'm just going to, so this is, this is desensitizing, but it's not what people think of desensitizing. I don't want him to not be aware of it. I want him to be aware of it and good with it, as opposed to ignore it. I don't want him to ignore it. Because a lot of the stuff I'm going to do on the ground has to do with him being aware of the flag. You know, a lot of the bend I'm going to put in his body has to do with using that flag to draw his thoughts. So I really want to reward him for looking at it. So I'm just going to bring this around here. He flicks an ear over here, doesn't seem too concerned. His ears move like that. I might wait for his head to lower very slightly. All right there, he blinked a bit more and he turned towards it. I'll take it away. But you think about when I first took the flag out of my pocket and brought it around, there was snorting going on. He was like, ooh, what is that thing? And what I showed him is he has complete control over the flag. But the other part of what I showed him is I'm very aware of his threshold. And that's that attunement I talk about, that sense of being seen and being heard. When I bring that flag out and he notices it and I stop right there, I'm telling him, I saw your concern. And there's a big old lick and chew right there. Very good. So I'm just going to bring this flag out here again. I'm going to come a little closer. And see him this close and he's not worried about it. And a minute ago, he was worried when it was a lot closer. I'm just going to wait here for a second for something to get better. There you go, he's just flapping his lips and he's, he's a little more relaxed. But can you guys over there see how much better about the flag he is? But I'm not desensitizing him to it. I'm staying below threshold. So I'm staying below the place to where he gets worried about it. And then when he, when he feels better about it, I take it away. And so I'm, I'm, I'm communicating to him my level of awareness, both coming and going. I bring it out and I'm aware of the, I stop the instant he becomes aware of it, okay? And then, you check it out for a while, and it doesn't come any closer, and then he, he might breathe a sigh, he might blink, he might change his ears a bit, he might lick his lips, whatever, and lower his head, and as soon as he does that, I'm gonna take it away. So I'm gonna say, I saw your level of concern, and I saw the instant you relaxed slightly, which, what does that tell me about me? I'm observant. I'm empathetic and I'm observant. And that is the, like the holy grail of having horses be relaxed is, you know, the whole, they know when you know and they know when you don't. They're aware, they're aware that you're aware of their awareness, basically. So I'm just gonna bring this flag out from here, bring it over here. He's just looking at Shona's horse down there, no big deal. But can you see he's a whole lot better about it? There you go, he just has a kind of a change in focus and I take it away. And so when I first 
when I was standing over there and I pulled the flag out and he kind of had a snort at it and he said, yeah, I've used the flag last. But I really got no idea where to start because he's worried about it. So where do you start with a horse that's worried about something if, if just bringing it out makes him worried? Well, you know, bring it out from here to here. That was about enough to make him worry. And as soon as he got worried, I stopped and I said, I see your worry. I'm empathetic to your worry. And then I just waited till he felt slightly better about it and I took it away. You know what I mean? So, so that's just, you know, it's just being aware of where the problem starts. The problem doesn't start later on, it starts in the beginning. So I'm just going to bring it out here, he's aware of it, but not really concerned about it. I might just bring it over here, move it around a little bit. So right now he's not blinking and his ears aren't, and right there he just started to acknowledge that flag. Did you see that? He was not blinking, so he was kind of frozen. And the thing we're trying to avoid is that freeze. Okay, but right then I moved it around a little bit more because he's allowing me to move it around a bit more. So I'm just going to bring it out here and approach him with it. I might just wave it around a bit like this. He looks away from it. So he's thinking away from it. A lot of times horses have done a lot of stuff with flags. They tend to think away from it. They're like, oh, not this crap again. So I'm just going to wait for him to get better. Better might be he starts blinking, better might be he changes his focus towards it. I could have stopped there. See that right ear started moving? So the ear wasn't moving. The flag's on the side, the ear wasn't moving, and then the ear started moving. That's when it started telling me I've come out of being inside my head and I'm getting a bit more out here in the open. And so by taking that away right there, I'm really, um, you know, I'm really telling him you know what, I'm so connected to you, I can tell what you're thinking. I can tell when your thoughts change. Now, nothing on him changed except that ear started moving a bit. So it wasn't just, I can't see his thoughts, but I can see the, there's a big sigh. I can't see his thoughts, but I can see very small um, physical changes that tell me that his thoughts have changed. He doesn't know that. But it's really like, you know, if you've ever been around someone and they, they get you, they, they get where you're coming from, you kind of, you feel good around them. And people that don't get where you're coming from, you don't like to hang out with them. So, so I'm just going to bring this flag around here. He becomes aware of it. See his head raised. Mm -hmm. Now, right now, I wouldn't take it away. And I don't think he's, what he's doing right now is not good for me because he's basically ignoring it. Right there, he's thinking away from it. There, he's thinking towards it. Then I'll take it away. Very good. So that's just a, you know, I wouldn't call that desensitizing. I'd call that sensitizing him to the flag. And if you think about sensitizing is asking them to do, teaching them to do something. The desensitizing is basically teaching not to do something. What I was sensitizing him to do then was stand still and mentally engage with the flag. So you can see from that video, I mean, that horse got quite confident really quickly because they can control the situation. And, and you, you can use this for any situation to where you are bringing the object to them. You know, like people say, oh, my horse doesn't like the bit. I go to put the bit in his mouth and his head flings up in the air. You can use it for that. You can use it for haltering. You can use it for saddling. You can use it for the, putting the saddle pad on. You can use it for putting a blanket or a rug, as we call it in Australia, on. You can use it for anything where you are bringing the object of concern to them, but you can also use it for any time you are taking them to the object of concern. So let's say you are approaching a horse trailer. Okay, you've got a horse, a, a horse that you know has a trailering problem. You're going to start to walk towards the trailer and you might be 50, 100 feet away, but when that horse stops and becomes aware that that trail is there and the next thing that might happen is you might go up to it you might try to get them in it and they look at that trailer you would just stop right there just wait and wait for that horse to show some sign of relaxation might be licking and chewing might be blinking the ears might start working the head might lower they might breathe deep or something like that and when they relax turn around and take them away so it's the same thing except you're approaching the 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 thing that bothers them rather than the, the thing that bothers approach, approaching them. So, you know, if, if you're on uh, any of my Facebook groups and, you know, you ask a question, I'd say I'd just do cat H in that, in that 
instance, this is what I'm talking about. Being aware of that threshold, being aware of their awareness of the thing and waiting for them to relax before you take it away. So I, I, I think it's kind of the holy grail of stuff. It just gives a horse so much confidence in you. It, it totally avoids any learned helplessness that a horse might get from any desensitizing and the other thing is it builds a great deal of connection and trust you know regular desensitizing kind of gets them over the object but you don't get that level of attunement that 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 feeling seen being seen being heard sort of thing from the person they don't get that from that other stuff so i really i'm i'm really high on this i've had some really um really big changes in some horses that in the past i probably would have um struggle to get some changes out of them or possibly would have sent them into a little bit of learned helplessness but anyway that's cat h hope you enjoy it and try it out with your horse i'm sure um, you'll see a big difference